Hi, I'm William Kokel, one of the staff searches from Fort Myers, Florida, and I want to talk about an unusual case with what I think is a novel treatment. This is a 53-year-old female, no significant past medical history. She has no history of autoimmune disease. She had a nine-month history of worsening of cutaneous and oral uh, mucous membrane wounds. Her wounds got so bad, in fact, that she was bedridden for the last six weeks prior to hospitalization. I thought this at, it was about 30% uh, of her total body surface area was involved. The biopsy showed pemphis vulgaris. Now, in this case, I elected to treat the patient like a second degree burn. So I gave aggressive fluid replacement, analgesia, infection control with systemic antibiotics, and surgical wound debridement. Now, what did we do at the first operation? I debrided all the cutaneous wounds. I applied a extracellular matrix graft, which is a myriad. This was applied to about two thirds of the wounds. Uh, all the grafts were tacked in place with absorbable suture. Now, this brings us to the first post-op pictures. We took off the extracellular matrix graft underneath total epithelialization. Same on the thighs and abdomen. Now, interestingly, all the areas we covered with the extracellular matrix graft had totally healed. The areas that were not covered, what were just treated with the Bactervan, Genomycin, and Adaptic, those showed no significant improvement in healing. So what did that tell me? It told me that the treatment of the underlying autoimmune disease was not healing the wounds. It was the extracellular matrix graft. What's the rationale I had for using this extracellular matrix graft? One, pain control. I've noted that covering donor sites of the skin graft with extracellular matrix grafts, such as Myriad, dramatically increases their post-operative pain. So I thought by covering her wounds will help significant pain control. Second, I thought by covering her wounds will decrease evaporative loss and help the fluid management. Next, I thought is ease of nursing. Well, you can imagine the time a nurse would have to spend on this patient. Again, 30% of the body had wounds. So the time to take the dressings down, clean the wounds, reapply dressings would be very labor intense. Second, every time that's done, the patient is going to be in pain, the patient's anxious. So the patient's quality of life is going to be significantly better if we can decrease the dressing changes again to once a week versus once or twice a day. Now, there's data to suggest that these advanced extracellular matrix grafts will decrease inflammation and infection. Now, the most common severe complication of PV is infections from the cutaneous wounds. Furthermore, you gotta remember that virtually all these patients with PV are on systemic steroids and often immunosuppressive agents. Again, both of these will further increase their risk of infection. This is the picture is one month post-op. At three weeks, basically, this patient's total, all her wounds were healed except for two little postage size areas on the uh, buttock. Now, typical healing time is usually about one to three months. We've decreased the healing time to three weeks, basically, in this patient. And again, hospital stake, hospital costs are dramatically better.